Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters Top Tips for Success, where each and every day I bring on new business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and have them share their top tips for success with you. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply, become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, MoneyMattersTopTips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Justin Andreessen on the line, and he's COO and co-founder over at Hamilton Porter. Justin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. So I'm excited to get more into what you're doing over at Hamilton Porter and how you're helping your clients. But before we do that, let's get a little bit further into your background. So how did you get started in your career in business? Yeah, that's great. I actually started very, very early. Um, serial entrepreneur. Um, we actually started a production and DJing company uh, when I was very young, around 16, and sold it by the time I was 19. Did all sorts of stuff with high schools and, and colleges and all that fun stuff and, and had a great time learning and growing the business from that point. Uh, went to college, uh, got my degree, played some baseball, did that whole deal. Uh, got really interested in the sales mindset. Um, so jumped right into sell baseball bats, professional baseball players. Of course, that makes sense for an old baseball player. Uh, saw how growing a sales team and that mindset made a lot of sense. Um, moved on to recruiting, technical recruiting. I was very interested in technology, how fast it's moving. I uh, wanted to learn more about the engineers and the developer along with that. Um, and from then on, you know, after a few years of experience, um, we moved on and, and opened our own shop. Man, that's awesome. Um, what I what I love about your uh, what I love about your career path is, I mean, you, you start out as really entrepreneurial guy. I can I can tell that just from your voice. Don't ask me how, but I know um, you um, you obviously work for somebody. You gain you get you gain a skill set right in recruiting and technical recruiting, and then um, at a certain period of time, which I like to think of as an apprenticeship time, we don't talk about that enough. I think um, really um, putting yourself in and really learning a profession before launching a company um, and feeling that you have another a layer of value to add to the world. Um, and then you went out and, and launched your own company. So that being said, you know, you've been um, um, many years since your very first venture, um, but there are some younger entrepreneurs out there that are maybe they're just getting started. What kind of advice would you give to that new entrepreneur that's really just getting started um, with their first business, of course, having the benefit now of having some hindsight on your, on your side? Yeah, first business, everything that goes along is courage. I think that more than anything else, I see a lot of skillful people, a lot of people who have the ability to do more, and they're not just willing to take jump, right? Uh, there's risk, and we should always assess every risk with everything we do and understand what we're putting it out there for. Um, but risk in a lot of business sense drives our success, right? And that fear that we had originally drives our success for further and further businesses, right? And failure is just a part of the process. I think people get stuck all the time on trying to – failure mindset of, I don't know if I can do it, I don't know if I can do it, and that just never leads them to the next step in their career and taking the chance when those are the people that I love to mentor and I love to talk to because those people can be completely successful if they just change the way they think about their current situation. Oh, that's great advice. I love it. Um, let's, uh, speaking of current situation, I think it's a great transition also. Let's, um, let's, let's, let's change it up a bit, I, Justin. I want to get into what you're doing over at Hamilton Porter. So first, uh, tell us a little bit more about the business, please. Yeah, Hamilton Porter was founded as a technical recruiting agency, right? Uh, all of the founders here, and I have two other founders, uh, Gino Aielli and Courtney Hunt, um, we've all worked in recruiting for a better part of a decade, right? Uh, we come from mm -hmm. big agencies, understood small agencies, and, and we saw kind of the gap that we were finding what happened with, you know, the new technology side of recruiting, which was, you know, send as many, many resumes out as possible, um, not really thinking too much about the client. And, and what we really wanted to do was create personal relationships and get really in touch with what our clients want. And I think that as a whole in our society, from a business level, people are losing. And even though you're an entrepreneur and you're a business owner and you can go and grab clients, it's the personal relationships to take your business as far as it can go. And, and even being that in Hamilton Porter, a lot of our clients we've had, we've worked for, for, you know, seven, eight years and placed hundreds of people. So that trust is really built up, and we have a better understanding of what those people want. And that's awesome. Is there any kind of – so you've been – I mean, you've been in the recruiting world for a long time. You're seeing technology. You're seeing a lot of other things happen. You know the big side of the comp big side of recruiting, the smaller, more niche um, side of recruiting. Any kind of trends you care to um, talk about that you're seeing from your vantage point just in general? 
Yeah, I think overall, and this has been happening for the last couple of years, is, you know, with this world technology and having everything at our fingertips all the time and that understanding when we go into companies a lot of times, they they want to have more than they really need and also not offer people what they really want, right? And it's the focus on that side, the understanding that the technology in itself and the engineers we have um, are less than a 1% unemployment rate, right? And so those guys are very, very hard to find individuals to begin with. And to get these people uh, as entrepreneurs and as business owners from every client we work with, we need to have a very good understanding of what these people want, what they're looking for, their career goals. And it's not the old school IBM and Apple's and um, these large companies that, you know, are hiring engineering farms. And though they can offer great technology, they not offer the career path or the actual mm-hmm. opportunity that these engineers are looking for. Um, so when I talk to new business owners and new starters in the technology world, um, I talk way more about what their company culture, what their ideas are, what their future goals are, what their plans for this person are in the future, more than what the actual technology needs in itself at this moment. Because you just selling a certain technology is never going to sell that candidate in any sense. Makes a lot of sense because uh, really, I mean, technologies can change, right? And if you're, if an, and especially if you're this highly technically specialized one percent, right, type of employee, um, then you you have a lot of people that are maybe knocking on your door also. So I'm guessing it's pretty competitive in that space too. Am I right? Exactly. These people are getting hit up by recruiters constantly, right? It's over and over and over. I mean, I have friends that are engineers that I place in companies that get 30 to 40 messages a day. And the last thing they ever want to hear is, well, we're working with a certain, you know, stack with JavaScript and certain front-end technologies <laughs> or back-end technology. They don't care. They know everyone's using it. They know the latest technologies. They want to understand what the company is doing and where their role fits into it and how you can personally connect to them. Man, I love that. I love your perspective. And the way you say it just makes a lot of sense. And I'm guessing there's some people listening to it that have been hit up on their, on their inbox on, on uh, LinkedIn or otherwise by a recruiter that was doing that. And they're laughing right now. Like, man, I get those messages all the time. <laughs> and they're so annoying. Yeah, exactly. That's so good. That's yeah, so and, good. And creating uh, a personal relationship with those guys mm-hmm. is so important. And that's why, you know, we, we work along with some of these candidates for years and years on the process, and a lot of them become hiring managers and, and directors themselves, and so they trust us and know us from having a personal lodge from, you know, maybe an hour or two of conversations through a whole process. That's awesome. So, Justin, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on Hampton Porter or to connect, um, what's the best way for them to follow up? Yeah, so our website is just or www.hamilton-porter.com. Uh, you can also reach me from my email, uh, which is justin at hamilton-porter.com. Um, obviously, Adam will have my name up there. Please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I, I love to talk business. I love to talk operations. I love to talk much more than just the recruiting process and just being an entrepreneur myself. I love to talk to fellow entrepreneurs about what they're doing and, and if I can help or, or they can help me. And a lot of times it happens both ways. That's awesome. Well, hey, Justin, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great work you're doing over at Hamilton Porter. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. Uh, share this with your friends and family. I mean, do all those great things we do to support our podcasters. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. And uh, Justin, thank you for coming on the show.